59 years, countless amounts of reboots, reimaginings, animated shows, and many iterations of the characters, the two most famous monsters in the world go head to head once more. But this time around, there could be a handicap. <laughs> Welcome to the final episode of Season 1 of the Bermackian Podcast, an epic sonic review series where I can review anything, but not everything. On this show, I cover any piece of entertainment, whether it be various tokusatsu films, Japanese or otherwise, anime, movies, and TV shows. It has been five months since Episode 48, The Battle of the Kingdom, my review of Godzilla 2, King of the Monsters. And I said in that episode that I was going to save this episode for this specific movie. And so after many, many, many months of waiting, this week is episode 49, War of the Kings, my review of Godzilla vs. Kong, a 2021 edition. Now, if you may recall, the last time these two titans fought each other was way back in 1962, when the title was reversed. And ever since then, people have been waiting for a rematch. It almost happened in 1991, but it never came to be. Suddenly, out of nowhere, these two are scheduled for a heavyweight title rematch this year. How did that happen? Well, let me give you some context. It was September of 2015 when Legendary Pictures bought the rights of King Kong from Universal Studios as long as the character is only referred to as Kong. The copyright situation of the name King Kong is so complicated that I've already explained it back in Episode 6. Anyhow, they brought the character from Universal to Warner Brothers Entertainment. Suddenly, there was mass speculation of a potential rematch. So then, th the next month, Legendary just came right out and confirmed it, stating that the movie is targeted for a May 22nd, 2020 release. I'll get to that in a little bit. The studio plan a shared universe with Monarch and the Center, stating that it will, quote, bring Godzilla and Legendary's King Kong in an ecosystem of other super species. The producer, Alex Garcia, confirmed that it will not be a remake of the original King Kong vs. Godzilla, stating, the idea is not to remake that movie. While we're on that topic, let me state something. For decades, people have been discussing the possibility of two endings of King Kong vs. Godzilla, saying that the Japanese version has Godzilla as the victor, while the American version has is Kong as the victor. Let me confirm it right now, since I've seen both versions. There were no two endings. I'm being honest right now, there were no two endings. Kong wins in both versions. Even Toho themselves confirmed it, in saying that Kong was the intended winner, even though the producer Tomoyuki Tanaka said that it was a draw. And also, it's important to know that Godzilla wasn't as big as an icon as he is today. It was his third movie at the time, so put that miss to bed, will ya? Anyway, back on topic here. Two years later, in May of 2017, Legendary announced that director Adam Wingard will take the director's chair for the project. When he spoke about the outline of the film by the writer's room, he said, We're going in very great detail through all the characters, the arcs they have, how they relate to one another, and most importantly, how they relate to the monsters, and how the monsters relate to them or reflect them. He also said he was going with it beat by beat, stating, So once again, it's a discussion, and about feeling out how to make it as strong as possible, so that when Terry goes to write the screenplay, he has a definitive breakdown of what to include. In August, when asked about the direct In August, when asked about the direction of the two monsters, he said, I really want you to take those characters seriously. I want you to be emotionally invested, not just in the human characters, but actually in the monsters. It's a massive monster brawl movie. There's a lot of monsters going crazy on each other, but at 
the end of the day, I want there to be an emotional drive to it. I really want you to be emotionally invested in them. I think that's what's going to make it really cool. And this is the big one here. He also expresses that there will be a definitive winner stating, I do want there to be a winner. The original film was very fun, but you feel a little let down that the movie doesn't take a definitive stance. People are still debating now who won that original movie. So I do want people to walk away from this movie feeling like, okay, there is a winner. Now, I mentioned the name Terry Rossio. You may recall that he was supposed to be the writer for the unmade Godzilla 1994 movie. In May 2017, Legendary assembled a team of writers, with the main one being Terry Rossio, who is leading said team of writers, who are Patrick McKay, J.D. Payne, Lindsay Beer, Kat Bosco, T.S. Nowlin, Jack Paglin, and J. Michael Straczynski. I hope I got that one right. When asked about his experience, Rossio stated, Godzilla vs. Kong was my first experience running a writer's room, and it was fantastic. It was a blast reading samples, meeting different writers, and crafting a story in a group setting. It felt similar to animation, where the film is happening up on the walls, and the end result is better than any, any one person excuse me, could accomplish on their own. The director and co-writer of Godzilla 2, Michael Doherty and Zach Shields, had provided the writers to make sure that the themes from Godzilla 2 are carried over, with some help from a film doctor. Finally, after getting the cast, new and old, it was time to begin filming. And that began on November 12, 2018 and ended in April of 2019. So, with all that being said, the only thing left was the composer. Well, in June of 2020, it was announced that Thomas Hulkenberg, better known as Junkie XL, will be the composer. Speaking of 2020... Oh, sweet mother of God. I mentioned the movie was supposed to be released on May 22, 2020, but thanks for a certain <clears throat> move to 13, it didn't happen. So contact with help. Back in January of 2020, things literally hit the fan, from Great Britain leaving the European Union, to killer wops, to the sudden and tragic death of Kobe Bryant. God rest his soul. But what happened in China in February is when shit really hit the fan. The virus went from an epidemic to a pandemic so quickly spreading from Asia to Australia to Europe to Africa to North and South America. So in March, the World Health Organization, or the WHO as I call them, decided that the world should close businesses for the time being and go into a global lockdown inside our homes, meaning that many events that were supposed to happen in 2020 didn't thanks to the pandemic. Various expos canceled. The 2020 Tokyo Olympics delayed. WrestleMania 36, uh, okay, that actually happened anyway, just without fans. And of course, movie theaters are also affected. While some movies were able to be released before the pandemic, the majority of them were either delayed or canceled. This movie included. Originally, it was delayed to November, but one Black Lives Matter movement, explosions, and the increased amount of <coughs> COVID cases later, it was delayed again to May 2021. But suddenly, the businessman at Warner Brothers said, not the hell was it, and decided to put Wonder Woman 1984 and The Witches under streaming platform known as HBO Max. And then, on Christmas Day, Warner Brothers announced that 17 of their major releases are going to be on the platform, the exact same day as they're going to be in theaters. Of course, one of the 17 movies is Godzilla vs. Kong. The problem is that Legendary Pictures was not aware ahead of time, and a legal battle ensues. Later, the two companies reach an agreement, and the film will proceed to be on the platform. Suddenly, Legendary announced that the movie will be released on March 31st, 2021. On January, 24th, on January 24th, 2021, the long-awaited trailer was released on the internet. Needless to say, the interests were back. Not just that, there was hype. Maximum hype. At the time of me writing this, the movie has already earned 122 million US dollars overseas, with 70.34 million US dollars coming from China alone, setting a record for Hollywood during a pandemic international release. And at the time of me writing this, it's currently sitting at 79% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is very promising for the studios. Now, I'm about to discuss the movie. Now hang on, hang on, hang on. If you haven't seen the movie yet, don't worry, this is a non-spoiler review. So with that said, the film synopsis goes as follows. Legends collide as these two mythic adversaries meet in a spectacular battle for the ages, with the fate of the world hanging in the balance. 
Kong and his protectors undertake a perilous journey to find his true home, and with them is Jia, a young orphan girl whom Kong has formed a unique and powerful bond. But they unexpectedly find themselves in the path of an enraged Godzilla, cutting a path of destruction across the globe. The epic clash between the two titans, instigated by unseen forces, is only the beginning of the mystery that lies deep within the hollow earth. When I come back from this two minute break, I'll give you my final thoughts on the film and give it my final score. this out there i enjoyed the hell out of this movie but of course it's not perfect okay so i watched it in theaters for the first time in like it feels like two years and then i watched it again here in my own room on a glorious 4k uhd tv with a soundbar and subwoofer money well spent anyway the first thing that came to my mind is that the story is not all that good but the movie knows that Let's be honest, the movie knows what we're here for, and it gave it to us. I love that the Hollow Earth idea is more explored here, and it leaves so many ideas of what Legendary can do with it. Other elements of the story, though, it could have been more better. Plus, the movie moves at a faster pace than usual. The characters in the movie are a little bit better than Godzilla 2. They all have motivations on why they are doing what they're doing. The standout character is the deaf girl, by far. Others are decent, but some I completely forgot about. Moving on to the effects. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> I'm going to compare them with food. The visuals are like a fine, healthy salad with homemade ranch. Every single particle effect is so detailed with richness. The monster designs are the toppings that gave it more flavor. The fight choreography is superb, especially in the second half. Wingard, you just gave me an entree so goddamn delicious it came with a side of sawmill gravy. And the music is the dessert. The sweetness in every single note is the right amount of energy, brass, ambience, and melodies. Junkie XL, you've outdid yourself, my friend. But enough of the food comparisons. Let's get into the actual grade. Overall, I enjoyed this movie. It's self-aware of what it is, and I'm happy for it. Although, the flaws do hamper the score but it still earns my final score of 81 charged battle axes out of 100. If your theater is open, then by God, go check it out. Now, as of this recording, the movie has already earned $9.6 million at the box office, at the box office, during a pandemic, mind you, which is insane to me. And it also means that it could be a good sign that this shared universe might be continuing, but time will only tell. Until then... We'll just have to wait. Thank you all for watching and your support. If you're new to the channel, then hit the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified. This has been Demetrius signing off. Have a good day. Now, about that certain project that I wanted to finish. <laughs>